I'm in a relationship with someone I love very much. How to handle when we're going through personal contrast. Like when we're having an argument. I know about getting out ahead of the manifestation, meditating and seeing all the goodness and love that we have for each other and uh, manifesting the beautiful things. But there's times when we're going through contrast, how to handle it, because I don't like well, to focus it, on the contrast. Before you go further, we, we, we want to ask, are you talking about those times when the differences in you, the differences in your perspectives or opinions or even desires, that beautiful difference that you were born to experience benefit from are you saying that in those moments when that beneficial difference is active what do you do we argue you focus, <laughs> focus, but but focus upon the beneficial difference in other words we want you to embrace the clear understanding that your differences are of such value they are and I see that your samenesses that could lead to absolute boredom that mm. really is why people move on from relationships so often but if you have a relationship where differences still abound mm -hmm. where you help produce in each other new clarity about what you prefer mm. so that you have a dynamic active relationship mm. then it can be eternal mm -hmm. but if you can ever get so compatible and so same and so aligned in every idea about everything then this relationship has no more potential to produce expansion mm -hmm. yeah. and I understand that and I see the beauty and she has helped me grow tremendously what happens so often is instead of embracing that difference in a in a non-defensive way Mm -hmm. Most are defensive because mm -hmm. most people, and it's so screwy, but most people, when they encounter someone, especially someone up close to them who they love very much, when they encounter a difference in a, of opinion in someone like that, their usual knee-jerk response is to become defensive. Mm -hmm. And in their defensiveness, they immediately lose their connection, connection mm -hmm. with their own clarity, their own source. They, they're no longer in the receiving mode. Mm -hmm. So... Of course, your goal is to remain in the receiving mode while you are acknowledging your differences. Mm -hmm. And it's a little tricky, but it's only tricky because as humans, you have developed patterns of defense. Mm -hmm. Like if someone doesn't agree with me, then I need to get them on board with me instead of understanding the value of the varying perspectives. Mm -hmm. When you come together collectively as a group, th there are not two of you that are the same. You are, you, are, you are so varied in your approach to life, which makes you collectively really, really good for one another. Mm -hmm. Because without variance or difference, you could not produce new ideas. So rather than feeling defensive about, about anything, mm -hmm. instead what you're wanting to do is acknowledge that there is advantage in it. And that's what we've been calling mm -hmm. step five. Yeah. Step five is realizing that you are, you are having some contrast and that you are aware of some contrast, but at the same time that you are having some contrast, mm -hmm. you are not out of the vortex in the contrast. And mm -hmm. that, that's what we're asking you. Do you think you can do? Can you, can you, be, can you be aware of something not wanted mm -hmm. and still be in vibrational sync with your inner being yes mm -hmm. and the way you do it is by acknowledging the value of the contrast by appreciating okay. the value of the contrast now, there I, is value in contrast there is va so so what you say thank you very much I hadn't looked at it in that way I'll think about that I may not ever agree with you completely but I I like that we have a broader view mm -hmm. I do see the value in contrast and early on I used to like if she would say something that would hurt my feelings like, or something like what I used to fight fire with fire but well, that doesn't most work. do that's that, <laughs> that's defensiveness yeah, that's but defensive. that's just but that but but you can't push against yeah. anyone without being off in the wilderness apart from your own inner being yes. so so when you fight fire with fire yeah. what happens is you leave your true power mm -hmm. and you wage a battle that that you're not winning even when you're winning mm -hmm. and yeah. and and the reason that most who are fighting fire with fire or who are fighting at all the reason that most get more and more belligerent about it or more and more strong about it is because you have a 
unconscious maybe maybe conscious awareness that you've stepped out of your energy zone out of your power zone mm -hmm. out of your true leverage zone and now you're trying to make up for it through the action and the words which are never very strong mm -hmm. but it's what makes people be so ridiculous yeah. it's what makes people be ridiculous with their words and their threats and their bullying mm -hmm. because because they're out of connection with true when you're in connection with true source you don't feel like bullying anyone Mm. you don't make threats you just mm. stand in your power and do everything you can to uplift you mm. see so in in the midst of a, a a sort of battle with your lover as you stay in your full power then there's no battle because there's no threat of you losing your true power you see mm. that's why that's why when you battle with each other and you get defensive Mm -hmm. It's because you've lost your power and now you're fighting against the person that you feel took your power away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tricky because when we want to talk about something that's uncomfortable or something that causes tension between us, I don't want to focus on the negativity. But we want, we want I you want to, to stay in alignment. We, but well, we want that too for yeah. you. But, but more than that, we want there to be nothing to be uncomfortable between you. In other words, there's nothing uncomfortable between your inner being and you. Your inner being doesn't care if you listen to them in your underwear. <laughs> in other words, there, 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 there is no, there, there is nothing that you do that se that causes your inner being to separate from you. There's plenty that you do that causes you to not be in the vibrational vicinity of your inner being. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, it's no, your, you, you can't get away from your inner being. Your inner being will continue to acknowledge you, to know you, and to love you, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. It's only your ideas that cause the separation, yeah. you see. So, and th this is just, this isn't all the time. This is just the times when you do have contrast. So, for example, say she comes home and she's out of alignment and she's upset. And, and I try to stay in alignment, so I try to separate myself. Okay, so here's, but it the, first, seems so here's the first But here's the first question that we want to ask you. So, she comes home out of alignment. And we're assuming that from your perspective, you were in alignment before she came home out mm -hmm. of alignment. Mm -hmm. So let's say that's the case that you, that that <laughs> that you are in alignment uh -huh. when she comes home out of alignment. And so when that happens, you like your inner being, your only intention with her is to help her get back into alignment. But let's say that she's so out of alignment that she's even snarky about you. But if you were really in alignment, you wouldn't take any of that personally. You would mm -hmm. just understand that she could use a little talking off the ledge mm -hmm. and you would just continue to love her anyway. You could find her contrast endearing or even of, of value. Mm -hmm. But if you're not really solidly in alignment, and she comes home out of alignment and therefore you see her as a risk to your alignment that's what makes you defensive mm -hmm. so if you are solidly in alignment then you don't feel that risk and then you don't feel defensive mm -hmm. you see what we're getting at I see. so usually you don't really rendezvous with anyone who's too far from where you are unless you live with them. In other words, we understand that. <laughs> In other words, if you live with them, they're going to come home no matter at law of attraction, be damned. Uh -huh. In other words, <laughs> they're coming home. They're coming home because that's where their bed is. They're, they're, co they're coming home. And so you just, you just have to be ready for them to come home. Mm -hmm. Which means you have, to, you have to be in alignment with yourself. And when you're in yeah. alignment with yourself, then there's value in everything that you see. When yeah. you're not in, in alignment with yourself, then you need everything to be the way you need it to be yeah. in order to what you erroneously, in a flawed premise way, think will support your alignment. Mm -hmm. You do not owe it to each other to be in alignment. And when you feather somebody else's nest, when you are so in alignment that... that, that they just they use you for their inner being then there are going to be testy times because nobody can stand in that solid place of being the support like the inner being is for anybody else mm -hmm. and yet you do that to each other all the time 
You, you want each other to be the way you need them to be in order to feel good. And when they're not, then they're doing something wrong. And that, that isn't how it is. Contrast is your strength. It is. I see the beauty in contrast. It's actually easier for me when she's in alignment and I'm out of alignment. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Everyone likes those who are easy to love. The easy to want love ones you think are your greatest benefit, but they are not. We're not asking you. We don't want you to be nice to each other from an out of alignment. We don't want you to fake it. We want you, Esther saw an advertisement in a magazine years ago, Jerry and Esther were on an airplane, and it was a, a hotel ad. And the ad said, we don't hire people and tell them to be nice. We hire nice people. <laughs> because you can't make anybody be nice if they're out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And so, Esther assumed that what the ad was saying is we hire people who are in alignment. We hire people who, who know about staying, who's, who it's, it's become their nature to want to feel good. Well, life keeps coming at you. This is the thing that we want you to acknowledge, embrace, and, and be all right with. Life is going to keep coming at you because there are so many variables. And you just want your shock absorbers to be ready to enjoy not deal with, not cope with, mm -hmm. not tolerate. We want you to enjoy life as it comes because every time another piece of it comes, it comes in answer to a request for expansion that you have set out there, mm -hmm. every bit of it. So when something comes that feels a little uncomfortable, what it is is posing the question which you're putting in the vortex, which will attract the answer which you, if you're one of the cooperative components, then when you get to move toward the answer of your own question or toward the solution to your own problem, you get to experience the growth expansion that you're all about, you see. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to us. We love you so much. But so, so many humans really think that they just want life to just be this perfect way so they can just observe it and feel good. And we promise you that will never be. And that's why you stir so much trouble up. <laughs> You, you, you look for problems because it's so satisfying to find solutions. And because problems and solutions, that is the equation for expansion. Mm -hmm. Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. That's the, that's the formula for expansion, which is the mantra of that which we all are. We are eternal beings. And if we are not expanding, we are really done. And we will never be done. So you can't stop expanding. So you might as well embrace your expansion, which means understand how expansion comes. So when you understand how expansion comes, then just because something's not perfect, you don't freak out and condemn it mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and be rude about it. Mm -hmm. When something, you, you embrace it, you appreciate it, you feel yes. thankful for it, you feel satisfied that it exists. And then you live happily ever after with so many other others who have differences in desires and opinions and beliefs. So next because time. no one is a threat to you other than your own split energy. And it's not really a threat, it's just an irritation. So next time I should be, baby, I'm so glad you're mad at me. <laughs> no, I'm just being silly. Well, no, 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 that's not, that's not silly, but there's a, but there's a, there's a more beneficial to you approach there mm -hmm. because, because I, it, it, it may or may not be that you're so glad that she's mad at you. But what you really want to say is, I'm so glad that this situation has been focused upon and has produced a new desire in me to which I will enjoy moving toward. Mm -hmm. It's so fun to move toward things. That's, we'll say it again, 100% of all satisfaction comes from a new desire that you're moving, from a desire, it doesn't have to be new. But we want to say new because if you've got this down, desire you move toward it, so you need another new one. In other words, you're, you're, you don't ever get it done. Mm -hmm. So you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. What you do want isn't your most active vibration. What you don't want usually is, but it's the most active vibration for your inner being. So it's calling you. So you have to adjust into the new desire because the situation that produced it is what's most active in you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the way it is? Yeah. What is, is what's most active in you. So now you care about the alignment. So you look toward it. You find the feeling place of it. 
you do some of the things that we've talked about here and you find the vibrational alignment to the desire and oh, it feels so good as it clicks into place. Aha. And then once you've found the vibrational alignment, now the manifestation happens too. So you ask for it, you lined up with it and now it manifested. And now you're standing in a whole new place with a whole new set of contrasting experiences, producing whole new desires. Yay. I'm still alive. <laughs> and then you line up with that. It clicks into place. It manifests. Now you're standing in a whole new place with a whole new set of contrasting desires. And what the, the flawed premise that so many humans live by, even those who've been listening to us for a while is that once I get that, I'll stand in this place and now my work is done. <laughs> and we say, if your work could ever be done, then your satisfaction could be done too. Because if somebody or something doesn't stir up a new desire to which you are moving toward, you're not going to find any satisfaction because satisfaction comes only from moving toward the desire. Yes. You don't have to close the gap completely to be satisfied. You just want to be moving toward it. You can't be moving in opposition to it. And you move in opposition to it when you're defending where you came from. When you think that, when you think that there's this pie that you're splitting up and fighting over, it's nothing like that. The universe is expanding in direct and equal proportion to the desires that you produce within each other. So what you want to say is, baby, thank you for producing a new desire within me. A desire for more harmony, a desire for more understanding, but most of all, a desire for the expansion that this, that this, whatever it is, is producing. So if you want to talk about something specific, you can't, it's not really important, but might be beneficial. We could, we could talk about some actual disagreements mm -hmm. and, and talk about it from the platform that we've just established. And you can see how easy it is to find that new place. Okay. I have learned when we are going through contrast and one of us is out. I have learned that when contrast has presented <laughs> itself to us, <laughs> it's not good to quote Abraham in the middle of a conflict. <laughs> that, <laughs> but, but, but here's the thing here, here, here's the flawed premise in that. Here's the flawed premise in that. If you're in alignment while you're quoting what you know, uh -huh. it goes down a lot better than if you're out of alignment and all defensive. Because uh -huh. if you're out of alignment and all defensive and using the Abraham words, you just look like a fraud. <laughs> and, and, and what happens is, if it's like most conflicts is, in the moment that you point out how someone could do something a little better, they want to remind you of when you weren't doing that, mm -hmm. even though it might not be happening now. Oh yeah. Remember that time? Remember when you were talking about that and I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't Abraham you, <laughs> I didn't Abraham you. Oh, man. So want to talk about anything or you feel satisfied? <laughs> Is it okay, babe? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you better go. I'm, I'm just kidding. You better, no, no, no. You better go. No, the one, um, I'm just kidding, being silly. The one thing that brings up the most, um, I guess, tension is we both have dreams. I have a lot of dreams, and uh, they fill me with passion, um, elation. I just yeah. envision them. I feel them. Yeah. But some of those dreams might take me away for four or six months, and that's very difficult yeah. on her part. Sure. So I'm trying to get ahead of the manifestations and create, um, because you want it manifest all where we both can travel together. Yeah, you want it all. Mm -hmm. You want it all. And so let's say that you've been focused upon one of those ideas and it produces in your, uh, sweetheart, the, the feeling of loss of you or the feeling of loneliness or the feeling of maybe even you're so selfish, you're going to go do what you want to do instead of what would be best for all of us or mm -hmm. whatever. And so she's feeling the lack in it. And in that is launching rockets of desire. Now, what kind of rockets of desires do you think are going into the vortex when someone feels that they're going to have separation from someone and they don't want it? In other words, she knows what she doesn't want. What is it? She's sending rockets of desire, what she would does want. But what we're, what we're getting at that anytime you know what you don't want, you your rocket of desire is about what you do want. In mm -hmm. other words, you just can't know what no. you don't want without what you do want being completely and accurately and 
equally evident. In other words, if she really doesn't want something, she really does want something else. Mm -hmm. But she's focused, it's true of everyone, on what she doesn't want, not on what she does want. But that does want did go into the vortex and her inner being got hold of it right away. Mm -hmm. So right away, what she wants which is the opposite of absence from you. What she wants is togetherness and harmony and all of that fun and mm -hmm. being together. So that's what she's putting into the vortex. Mm -hmm. So your dream and being together are now in the vortex and the cooperative components are already being gathered. Mm -hmm. So it's a done deal. In other words, your life experience caused you to clarify what you want mm -hmm. and it's in the vortex, it's a done deal. Now, the argument as she holds to her position of feeling the separation from you, doesn't let her be a vibrational match to what's in the vortex. So it can't, it can't come about. So now let's say that you, you're gonna like this, let's say that you understood this vortex and that you know that everything works out for you and that you know that you can have it all. So you know that you can have the travel, that you can have the work wherever it is, you can satisfy your dream, and you can be with those that you love. In other words, you know, let's say that you know that and she doesn't. She's not trusting that, let's say you are. So as you are trusting that, then the cooperative components are all coming into place. The cooperative components are, are um, activated. And if you're in the receiving mode, then ideas begin to flow to you. But let's say she's not there. So you're feeling confident and sure and eager about all of it and you know it's going to work out but she's more practical, she's living more in the real world and she's, she's worried about it and so now you're having a discussion about it and the more confident you seem, the more aggravated she gets because she, she is feeling more and more defensive and so that's what the battle is going, it feels like it's about, it feels like she's fighting you but she's not, she's fighting her own vortex. She's fighting her, her own big picture that's in the vortex. And you can't really do anything about that. That's something that she's got to do. But if you are gonna help her at all, then you've got to hold steady with that. But you don't usually hold steady with that because when you look at her out of the vortex, making her proclamations of what she's worried about, usually you get under the influence of her rather than staying under the influence of what you want. And when you get under the influence of her now you don't feel good so now neither one of you are feeling good no one's holding vibrational alignment with with what you want except your inner beings both of you are experiencing the separation of your inner beings and you're both blaming each other for how you feel good. <laughs> see how it works it really only takes one catching hold of the vision and staying with it but it feels like to you maybe a little rough ride in other words this is what we've been we were talking about yesterday when you hold the vision of something wanted and you are close up with someone who can't yet see that vision for most humans you just want to be understood so she keeps trying to get you to come to her to understand where she's coming from but if you come to her which is where she's coming from you're coming away from your vision mm -hmm. and 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 that's so uncomfortable isn't it uncomfortable mm -hmm. it's so uncomfortable and she's not doing it for for any any deliberate reason it's just sort of human nature it's not human nature in terms of the way you are really vibrationally wired but it's a sort of human habit that you've picked up because most of you have come to your conclusions based upon what you've been living and it's hard to trust and expect new wonderful things that that you haven't lived before most people really believe that they have to give up something for something else so they, they believe in sacrifice. So you can go off and live your dream and just leave me home all lonely. You could do that. That's, that's the way most people, it's hard to believe that you could go live your dream and that I could come too. Because I, I haven't experienced that before. Most people need to see it before they believe it. But we want you to know you gotta believe it before you can see it. And you gotta feel your way to it. So an argument is a good thing if it doesn't last very long. An argue, a flare-up is a really good thing because it puts new things in the vortex. But once things flare up, don't hammer with each other trying to find a solution because when you're out of the vortex, you're not ever going to find a solution. All you're going to do is dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the problem. Now that's all right because as you dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the problem, you create, oh, what a wonderful more. You put more and more and more into the vortex. But it reaches a point where there's enough in the vortex to keep you happily busy for 
20 or 30 years. It's time to start step three in it instead of doing so much step one in it. And after a little while, you'll come to trust so much in being able to be or do or have anything that you want that then it won't be step one anymore. It'll be step five. And step five is there's contrast, but I'm loving it. This is satisfying contrast. This is not separating contrast. This is clarifying contrast. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Helpful? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So my last thought was, um, we, I mean, every individual has their own alignment with source. And, and it's a, and it's a connection. dynamic moving thing. Mm -hmm. It's not like a college degree where once you get it, it's yours forevermore. Yeah. It either is or it isn't in the moment. So should we discuss like future dreams together and try to envision them together and sure, manifest if it's fun. them together? Sure. If you're in the vortex and so is she, Ooh, all that kind of conversation is wonderful. But if you're in there and she isn't, don't torture her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're both not, don't try to solve it because you won't solve it from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling at your very best, that's when you want, that's when you want to do that. When you get all tuned in, that entire universe opens to you and mm -hmm. all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And the best of the best of the best of it just shows itself to you. And the path of least resistance to move to it just shows itself to you too. It's just this most delicious journey. It is. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank Amen. you. Yeah. Yeah. Really good.